Project Zomboid can be an incredibly difficult game. The towns and cities are often infested with thousands of zombies, essential resources can be borderline unobtainable, and something as simple as driving a car down the road can end your playthrough in an instant. Because of this, I've decided to challenge myself a little more. To push myself further, I'm going to attempt to survive 100 days in the forest surrounding the major cities in Project Zomboid. A difficult task, but doable. For this playthrough, I chose to go as close to vanilla as possible. I went with Apocalypse as a default setting, and the only mods I'm using are Kill Count and Pillow's Cabin Spawns, so that I can get started right away on day one without being tempted to loot any houses beforehand. I chose the extremely isolated camping cabin since it's the most isolated cabin in the game, and that should add some more difficulty to this playthrough. For occupation, I went with Park Ranger for obvious reasons. I also went with Cat's Eyes, Outdoorsman, Herbalist, and Organized. To make all that possible, I chose Underweight, Slow Healer, and Illiterate. I also chose to go fully naked to start this playthrough, which will force me to actually fight some zombies to clothe myself. Getting into things, step one, this is, step one. is finding clothes and shoes. Mainly shoes. If you're watching me, chances are you've never gone more than five feet outside of your house and have no idea what grass or trees are. Well, in the wilderness, you can cut your feet up pretty easily if you walk around barefoot, and that's exactly what was happening. I decided to follow the dirt path while foraging for anything to use. I was able to find some sticks and rocks, but nothing tangible. About two hours into my journey, I came across my first zombie. Conveniently, they had shoes. And had killed a poor soul nearby. I looted both bodies and was able to finally clothe myself, and rip enough sheets up to use both makeshift bandages and make a stone hammer, which I'd use as my primary weapon for now. At least until I found a chip stone and crafted some spears and an axe. By late afternoon, I came across a tennis court that I attributed to a summer camp in the area. I assumed there'd need to be some zombies hanging around here, so I spam shouted to draw an even mouth. Luckily for me, I got a few takers, which I was able to get some better clothing and a watch out of. I was also able to shred the remaining clothes and end up with over 20 ripped sheets for my feet. Continuing on, I found a river that I decided to spend a few days by until I got my footing. I chopped down a tree and made a campfire, but realized I didn't have enough of the resources to make a drill plank, so I chose to just not sleep last night since I didn't hit ridiculously tired until around 5am and you need to be that tired to go to sleep on the ground. Regardless, I spent the morning of day 2 foraging for mushrooms when I came across another chipped stone. I used that to make a notched wooden plank so that I could make a fire. Now that I have a fire source, I spent the rest of the day fishing so I could eat normal food for once. Only problem is, I'm terrible at spearfishing and caught literally nothing for the first six to seven hours. I chose to eat all of my fillets tonight because I need to worry about pumping up my weight since I chose underweight to start with. Day 3 was spent foraging for more materials. I needed chipped stones to make spears and other tools, so that was the focus. Nothing too exciting happened today. I ended up making my way back around the campsite and killing a couple more zombies that I used to craft more sheet rope, which, in hindsight, was so incredibly stupid considering the amount of ripped sheets that I ended up needing later on. I messed up on day 4 by using the rest of my sticks to craft axes, which means I have no sticks to start a fire with. That being said, I spent the rest of the day fishing. Now that we're a little sustainable, I want to get some walls built to secure my safety going forward. I spent the majority of day 5 foraging. Surviving off the land creates a dependence on tools that you can only craft from this activity. Things like chipped stones, tree branches, and a ton of food sources like berries, mushrooms, and insects.
In the evening, I was able to craft a couple axes and chop down some trees to begin building up the walls to my compound. Day 6 saw me heading back into the abandoned campsite to find a bed, or at least something to use as a bed. I know I talked about not looting buildings, but I'm making a change to that rule right now. This playthrough is going to get really boring if I can't do anything because I spend the entire day ridiculously tired. So going forward, I'm going to allow myself to enter buildings, but will only be able to loot boxes of nails, saws, and furniture to decorate my base with. Now, as I said, my original plans were to start off heading to the abandoned campsite. Well. That was until I stumbled into a horde of zombies and broke my spear and a hammer, forcing me to retreat back to my safe space. I spent the rest of the day fishing, and managed to catch a whole one fish in the 8 plus hours I spent on the task. The next day, I headed back out and was able to clear out some of the zombies around the area. before looting a building to find two boxes of nails that I could use for my base. I almost ended my run when I was checking out the cafeteria and didn't hear the zombies breaking in behind me. I was clearly outnumbered here and didn't have any more spears to fight with, so I cut my losses and, once again, headed home to spend the rest of the day fishing. I just can't catch a break. After running all the way back to base to grab some ripped sheets, I decided to spend another day fishing. Didn't feel like trying my luck again, and the rain made it incredibly difficult to find anything, so foraging's out of the equation. A big issue I was running into here is being drenched makes it easy to catch a cold. Fought this by swapping out my wet clothes with extra sets that I looted off of corpses since they dry over time in your inventory. So, to grab a bed out of any of the cabins, I need a stone hammer, and to be carpentry level 2. I don't have hammers, and I'm only halfway to level 2, so we'll need to change that. Fortunately for me, I don't have a saw, and there's no way to craft one with the tools given, so the best way for me to grind carpentry is to cut down trees, and then use those to make giant walls to fence myself in with. First things first, we need chip stones, so that's what I spent the next few days focusing on. I didn't have much luck on day 9, and really the only thing worth noting was that I got a lower torso injury from a zombie that literally spawned in front of me after I opened an outhouse door. On day 10, aside from foraging, I found a cowboy hat, and while slapping it on my head, triggered the helicopter event, which I thought was fitting. I wasn't really worried about it though, since I'm in the middle of the fucking woods, and there's just not many zombies here to worry about, aside from that group hanging out around the camp. The only real downside of the heli event was, while I was fishing, I noticed a couple zombies had gathered across the river and were watching me. Day 11 was more foraging. Outside of that, I spent time looking for mushrooms and fishing. I was finally starting to gain weight, which was a pretty big goal for me since the underweight trait causes you to burn through stamina much faster, and that's never a good thing. After three days spent mainly foraging, I came away with 12 chip stones, 10 tree branches, and 11 stones. Not exactly what I was hoping for, but we'll make it work. And got to work cleaning out the surrounding area. On day 13, I cleared out a couple zombies before finally getting the chance to loot a lounge area where I found a comfy green chair to bring back. Should fix the sleep issue I've been running into, and honestly, it should be pretty smooth sailing from here. After getting back to base that afternoon, I started the process of putting up my giant log walls. I know, super exciting, but this is the best way for me to grind out some carpentry XP while staying true to the challenge. It's also going to look really cool whenever I finish. After using up all the logs, I turned to fishing again. I'm not really trying to hang on to any food since one, it's literally everywhere around me, and two, I need to keep putting on weight. On day 14, I cleared out the nearby zombies who like to just stare blankly at me from across the river. After that, I spent some time cleaning up my surrounding area before once again spending the day fishing. Day 15 saw me heading to the main building of the Camp Busy Beaver. There were a ton of zombies around, so it took me a while to sneak my way in, and once I finally did get in, there were more stragglers that I also needed to be cleared out. The main point of running all the way out here was strictly to find a saw, which I came up empty-handed on again. 
This building was basically just a giant tease. It was full of hammers, metal pipes, hand axes, a duffel bag, which I can proudly say I took none of, no matter how much it killed me inside. Day 16 was another looting run to the buildings. And by looting run, I mean a giant ball crusher where I sit and pray that I find a saw. After searching damn near every building in the vicinity, I finally got lucky and found a saw in a storage cabinet. This was basically all I needed for my base. Now the real fun can begin. And by that, of course, I mean foraging. Lots and lots of foraging. Normally I'd show a montage of this, but it's much easier to just do this. All right, so it's been about a week or just over a week and I've been able to gather quite a few materials that we'll be needing. We were able to make a shit ton of stone axes, which I put to use immediately by beginning the process of cutting down all the trees in the area. This took a couple days to work through, but by day 27, we finally had the interior cleared out and could start progress on the wall. After a day of building, I ran out of ripped sheets, which I need to build walls with, so I'll have to get on that. I spent all of day 29 fighting zombies around the camp with the goal of gathering as many ripped sheets as possible. It was a nice change of pace considering this really hasn't been a combat focused challenge so far and honestly probably won't be in this instance. This was meant much more to be a take on nature, which is oftentimes forgotten in Project Zomboy because the focus is on the massive hordes gathering around the city instead of the rainstorms and lack of available resources in the surrounding area. Day 30 was back to building, at least in the morning. During the afternoon, I took a break to go forage for some food and while shoving dandelions in my mouth, which first of all, who the fuck eats dandelions? Psychopaths, that's who. But anyway, while I was repeating psychopathic behavior, I almost bled to death due to a scratch on my neck from apparently sawing myself with a tree branch while foraging. I spent all of day 31 cutting down trees to prepare to finish up the walls. In the process, I burned through the rest of my axes, which means I've now broken over a hundred tools at this point. Nothing really important about that, I just thought you'd appreciate a little fun fact. All of August 9th was spent moving all the logs I'd cut down on the previous day. Basically just moved all of them over to the opening that was left so that tomorrow, I can just wrap up building without spending half a day walking back and forth to grab four logs at a time. And now that they're all in place, it's just going to be so much easier. After harvesting my broccoli the following morning, I spent some time building out the northern end of the wall. By early afternoon, I'd run out of ripped sheets again, and I decided to end the day by, you guessed it, fishing. Following the events from yesterday, I headed back into camp to find some more zombies to abuse on my quest to get them to take off their clothes. Now, this seems like a surefire thing. Just head on over, find a couple zombies, and get on with my day. Except, there's no zombies. Like, anywhere. Late in the afternoon, I noticed I was bleeding, and when I went to check, I found that my shoes had fallen apart and that I was wandering around a forest in a pair of socks. After getting back to base, I had to face reality. I had two fucked up feet, no bandages, so I did the only thing I could think of, and started fishing. Now, if you're newer to the fishing aspect of Project Zomboid, this probably sounds absolutely retarded, but let me explain. Not only can you catch shoes while fishing, you can also catch socks, which you can rip up to turn into ripped sheets, which can be used as bandages. My favorite part of this is the fact that I'm spearfishing, so I just like to imagine some random hillbilly doomsday prepper who's just out in the middle of nowhere Kentucky, stabbing shoes and socks in the middle of a river, and being way too excited to try them on. Day 35 was more fishing. Not for food purposes though. I had some ripped sheets for bandages now, but still needed shoes. Otherwise, I'd just be this never-ending cycle. And as luck would have it, I'd catch some of the largest fish in this playthrough, but not any shoes. And when I say largest fish, I'm talking about those 70 to 90 hunger fish that'll keep you set for a couple days off one fish alone. Part of the joys of walking around barefoot in the forest is that you cut your feet on literally everything. As if I even need to say anything more on it, I spent the entire day fishing with no success on fishing out a pair of Jordans. That being said, once again I caught myself another massive fish, and this time a pike with minus 90 hunger. Now I can finally get back to whatever it is I was doing before. But first, check out the collection of fish just sitting in my campfire. Just an absolute shit ton of food. Could feed a whole town with that. One more note, that pike is good for a 117 hunger, which might honestly be the largest fish I've ever caught in Project Zomboid, so there's that. Now that we're in a better position, I think it's time to get rid of that crippling depression. Now, ironically, the best way to do this is just to eat my sadness away. Cooked fish that are heated give a minus two unhappiness, compared to the plus two unhappiness they give when eaten cold. So let's get to it. I grabbed the smallest fish I had and threw them on the campfire. 
when they were heated up, I went to town on them. Like a scene straight out of my 600 pound life. Oh, also, one mini tip here for those concerned about ending up on my 600 pound life. You see how I'm gaining weight here? Well, if you hold down shift or whatever key you have binded to sprint and speed up time, the game will register you as sprinting calorie wise. So you can just hold that down until the up arrow goes away so you won't be gaining weight anymore. Well, I basically ran out of food at this point trying to eat my sadness away. So it's back to fishing. That and at this point, it's the best way for me to get ripped sheets. I was able to get two pairs of socks, which is enough for one wall and enough fish to finally get rid of my depression, which I successfully removed on the morning of day 40. Anyway, I spent today burning through my sock collection before running out with three walls to go. If my math's right, that means I need 12 more ripped sheets or six pairs of socks. So you know what that means. As if I couldn't brag enough about the massive fish I've been catching so far, I managed to pull another big pike with minus 100 hunger uncooked and after cooking, hit you with a minus 137 hunger. So naturally, I ate it all in one sitting because mama ain't raised no bitch. On day 41, I took to foraging. I needed more chip stones to make some spears and honestly was going to need them anyway for more axes if I wanted to turn this area into a real compound. The next few days were once again back to fishing. Fish. Again, I only need a few more rip sheets to finish off the walls, so that's all I was really focused on at this time. Also, I'd like to point out that now that I no longer need shoes, I'm catching like three per session. After wrapping up the exterior walls, I got to work cutting down more trees. This took the majority of the day, but I was going to need all the logs I could get if I was going to turn this place into a real home. Day 48, I finally got to use the saw and spent the majority of the day moving all of the logs into one spot before sawing them into planks. After that, I did some cleanup work around the yard and added more fuel to the fire. The next morning, I planted more broccoli. The goal here is to stagger the seeds so that I never have a massive surplus that would go bad before I had a chance to eat it. So I'm trying to plant them in plots of three at a time, spreading out by a few days. Now it's time to get started building a small storage room on the southwest end of the base. In there, I built three crates that I crammed everything into in what was an attempt to be somewhat organized going forward. On day 50, I added fencing to the two openings on the wall, and then used the rest of the planks building out some of the framework to my house. I'll need more chip stones to make some axes, but it ended up raining pretty heavily, so that'll have to wait until at least the following morning. Day 51 was a giant waste. I spent the majority of the day waiting for it to stop raining, and bided my time by cutting my grass with my bare hands. Day 52, I started my foraging escapade. I want to get enough chip stones that I really don't have to worry about wood anymore, and that's going to take some time. It was still raining on day 53, so I decided to pass my time with some combat. A couple zombies had accumulated on the end of the river. Of course, now that I don't need rip sheets anymore, they decided to make an appearance. Fifty four was back to forging. Same old, same old. This continued for a couple days, and it's, at least in my opinion, pretty boring to watch, so we're going to cut ahead. Alright, so I didn't get to forge for as long as I would have liked, but I don't have many ripped sheets again, and you need those or dirty rags to make axes, so day 58 was spent cutting down a ton of trees, like entirely spent cutting down trees. Which I continued into day 59. After I broke all my axes, I spent the rest of the day moving all the logs into the compound so that I could saw all of them in the same place. Which I did on day 60. After gathering around 150 planks, I got to work finishing up my little house. There's not much to it yet, but we'll start adding to it after we build out some other rooms. Today, I started the framework on what would become my little kitchen dining room area. Nothing fancy about it, just a little box that I was planning to add a table and some shelves to. Finished up the kitchen on day 62 using the remaining planks. I leveled up my carpentry during one of the more recent days, so I'll need to upgrade the walls in the bedroom and storage room, but to do that I'll need more planks, which is what I spent the next day doing. At least in the morning anyway. I had three axes, so naturally that means I cut down two trees for a total of 18 planks that I used to upgrade the walls in my bedroom. Day 64 was kind of a wash. 
I did some fishing in the morning, but other than that, I'm not really sure what to do. It's raining, so I can't forage, and there's not really all that much left to do here. Day 65 saw me heading back into the campgrounds to grab some decorative pieces. I decided to target the main office, and came away with a couple small pieces that I really like. Now that we have some decorations in place, we can start cleaning up the yard. I was able to craft 15 stone axes off of some ripped sheets that I looted on a zombie yesterday. And with those axes, got to work clearing out the trees and bushes around the compound. The next day, I harvested my crops and got to work cutting all of the grass around my compound because that's kind of where we're at at this point. We've kind of reached the stage where there's not really all that much left to accomplish. We built a self-sustaining base, which means the process of going forward just kind of continues to cycle indefinitely. I fish or garden for food, forage for resources to make spears to continue fishing. I'd say we'd build more, but I'm out of nails. And at this point, the days all kind of blur together. Hours turn into days, which turn into weeks. After a hundred days here, I can honestly say that this was a very refreshing change of pace from normal Project Zomboid playthroughs. It's got its own challenges and obstacles that need to be dealt with, and forces you to play outside of the norm, which I really enjoyed. Our compound is fully self-sustainable, and we've built a rather comfortable life out here. The only anomaly with this is the kill counter, which shows 9 kills by vehicle, which I'm not sure where they came from since I haven't left the section of the woods, but wondering if that has something to do with like the way zombies were killed, or as in like an insta-kill by spear versus being hit by one, I don't know. But other than that, here's what the skills look like after 100 days here. I'd love to do another challenge like this, so if you guys have any thoughts or ideas, please leave them down below and I'll check them out. As always, thank you to my YouTube members who make it possible for me to make these kind of videos, and if you'd like to support the channel, you can join for as little as $1 a month and unlock over 20 exclusive videos and a ton of other bonuses like early access to videos and special gear for our Project Soundboid server. Anyway, that's going to do it for me. As always, thanks for stopping by.